Remember those epic battles in games where you clash with seemingly invincible foes? The ones who break the rules you just spent hours mastering? Those are bosses, and let's be honest, they can be a bit unfair. They teleport like ninjas, unleash attacks that defy physics, and have health bars that seem to regenerate faster than a plate of cookies at a bake sale. While we're stuck with our trusty sword and shield, they wield magic missiles and laser beams. It's enough to make you want to throw your controller in frustration. But here's the thing, we secretly love it. The challenge, the adrenaline rush, the satisfaction of finally conquering that impossible foe. It's what makes these battles epic. Bosses are the ultimate test of skill, forcing us to adapt, strategize, and unleash our inner game in badass. So why do these fuckers, I mean, sorry, bosses, get to break the rules? Number one, they are the crucible of skill. Imagine facing a monstrous knight who shrugs off your strongest blows, then warps behind you raining fiery hellfire. Bosses aren't just tough, they're reality bending enigmas that force you to master every nuance of battle, to think outside the box and to adapt like a seasoned warrior. Every dodge, every parry, every well-timed counter feels like a mini victory, building into a crescendo of glorious triumph when you finally bring that behemoth down. Number two, it's Law Incarnate. Bosses aren't just pixelated punching bags, they're living, breathing embodiments of the world story. A manipulative sorcerer might weave illusions that distort reality, reflecting their warped minds, a corrupted king that commands legions of undead, or you know, showcasing the horrifying consequences of his thirst for power. These rule-bending abilities aren't just cheap tricks, they're vivid manifestations of the narrative plunging you deeper into the game's rich tapestry and story. This is how game developers create a world that seems to be living and fresh. Number 3. Fresh Blood in the Arena Remember the monotonous grind of battling identical goblins for the hundredth time? Bosses are the adrenaline shots of the heart of gameplay. They're unpredictable whirlwinds of chaos. Throwing everything you know out the window, suddenly dodging isn't enough. You need to grapple onto flying platforms or solve environmental puzzles mid-fight, or even team up with a former enemy to take down the greater threat. Bosses keep you on your toes, making every encounter a fresh dance of strategy and survival. This keeps the game fresh and keeps you interested and keeps you wanting more. Masters of Disguise Sometimes, a boss's cheats are actually masterclasses in disguise. That regenerating health might force you to learn the rhythm of their attacks, identifying windows for critical damage. Their teleporting might train your reflexes to anticipate the next move. Bosses can be a harsh tutor, but their lessons are invaluable, preparing you for even greater challenges that lie ahead. There's even a chance that these mechanics that they teach you are mechanics that you can take advantage of in the future which makes you better at the game and makes you practically indestructible. Number 5. Sweet Revenge We've all been there, stuck on a boss for hours, cursing their unfair advantages, but then that magical moment arrives and you exploit a tiny chink in their armour, land a perfectly timed counter and watch their health bar plummet. The surge of satisfaction is indescribable. It's like biting into a juicy steak after days of bland rations. You savour the victory knowing you outwitted the very being who defied the rules. Knowing that you are the one that beat them even though they were cheating and you weren't. This satisfaction is what drives us as gamers to fight against bosses and keep trying until we beat them. Even if it's the next day, we'll still do it and we don't give up. Number 6. Designer Unleashed Bosses are playgrounds for game creators. They're freed from the shackles of fairness to craft mind-bending abilities and attacks that wouldn't work for regular enemies. Imagine a boss who controls gravity, flinging you around like a ragdoll or creating impossible platforms to navigate. It's a visual and mechanical feast, pushing the boundaries of what's possible and leaving you awestruck. It gives developers the creativity to do what they want to do with the game and create features that no one's ever tried before and it's things that you can't put into a normal enemy because it just wouldn't work. Every teleport, every unblockable attack, every unexpected move from a boss cranks up the tension to nail-biting levels. You're never sure what's coming next, your heart's pounding in your chest as you anticipate the unknown. This constant edge of your seat feeling is what makes boss battles so memorable. 
etching them into your gaming DNA long after the credits roll. It's these moments that make you better as a gamer overall. I'm sure that as someone that's been playing games for even a few years, you have memories of at least one boss that was so hard to beat, but you eventually beat him. And it may have been down to the wire where their health bar was at a slither and so was yours, but you still managed to get that final blow before they did. Boss battles are what create memories when it comes to games and it's essential for us to remember games. The most memorable things in most games will be a boss fight, whether you like it or not. Number 8 is the David and the Goliath triumph. Bosses flaunt their rule breaking powers, highlighting your own limitations as a player, you're the underdog. The David facing the seemingly invincible Goliath, but that's precisely what makes the victory so sweet. Every successful dodge, every landed blow is a testament to your skill and perseverance. You've overcome not just a boss, but the very unfairness of the game itself. The fact that the boss is able to cheat and you're not, and you still manage to beat him because of it. These things normally culminate in final bosses at the end of the game, where some games may start off with that boss at the very beginning, forcing you to lose by beating you with one hit. At the end of the game though, you'll get to the point where you can take out that boss in a few hits instead. It tells a story and it makes you feel more powerful. It tells the story of your progression through the game. It tells a story about how powerful your characters become since the start when you first saw that intro scene at the start of the game. There is nothing better than beating a really hard boss. One of the best feelings you can ever have in a game is fighting for potentially hours, even though you may have died 15 times and it may have taken you five hours, just the fact that at the end of the game, you come out on top and you beat that boss, even if he beat you more times than you beat him, it doesn't matter. You completed the game. You got the triumph and you got the victory. So while the unfairness might sting, remember that boss rule breaking serves a multitude of purposes, ultimately enriching the gameplay experience and making our victories all the more satisfying. After all, Overcoming impossible odds is what makes being the hero so thrilling. And speaking of being so thrilling, next week Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League releases, and you can check out my video up here on the left about Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League and my alpha experience playing the game. Or if you like, you can check out my Xbox Developer Direct January 2024 in summary up on the right. Thank you for watching my video, I've been Green Lichen, and I will see you in the next one.